You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 208 of Teach Better Talk. My name is Ray Hewart, and as always, I'm with my altruistic friend, Jeff Gargas. How are you, Jeff? Nice. I had a feeling you were going to go with that after talking with Adam afterwards about his use. Well, you said he he loves that word, and I love that word, and so I was like, oh my gosh, we have to use it in the intro, so there you go. Well, thanks. Appreciate that. Um... I, I we did this in the last episode, but I got to get. I heard. Th- did you have a little laughter when you started again? Like, yeah. are, are the dogs doing stuff again? Is that no. what's going on? Stop I don't want to get us into a whole other dog bed conversation, no. but I've got to ask. Okay, I only laughed because, <laughs> <laughs> guys, I was going. I was saying the the two oh eight, and I was thinking about that it was coming up, and I started laughing, giggling about. I thought about how I laughed in two oh seven, and so that's literally <laughs> all it was. I was like. Hee hee, I laughed at this last time. <laughs> Whatever, guys. It's late. I'm tired. We're three episodes in tonight. I just want to go to bed. <laughs> so the, the laughter of this one was giggling about the laughter in the last one. Yeah, because on Monday nights, you guys know that we record like three episodes on Monday nights. I was going to say, give them context of the fact that like it's weird if it was like a week away, but no, like no, it was no. only just a little bit ago. So no, it's, it makes sense. It was an hour ago, and so we had our third uh, recording tonight with Adam, which is what we're going to get to in just a minute. So I was just giggling about how when we recorded 207, I was laughing at not knowing the number, and I knew the number this time, guys. I just want to preface, but it's been a long day. I did remote teaching all day. We're on episode three of the podcast for tonight recording, and so I giggled again. I'm, I'm easily giggling today. It's fine. I love it. I'm just sitting here wondering... If Mark Keller has already skipped through sorry, the intro. Sorry, Mark Keller. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so um, so this was a fun episode. Super excited to get into this with Adam. Uh, something fun I want to touch on because Adam is uh, very recently announced. He, he and Jeff Prickett, their podcast, the Principal Leadership Lab podcast, um, is officially part of the Teach Better Podcast Network, mm-hmm. which, by the way, you can check out at teachbetterpodcastnetwork.com or teachbetter.com slash podcasts. Um, so I thought maybe it'd be cool to just kind of like touch on the podcast network, like what it is, what it's about, why we, what the heck we're doing with it. Why do we do that? Um, so I'm going to turn that to you. I'm just gonna let you go. So, 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 so if I were to ask you and I was like, Ray, what the heck is the teach better talk or teach better podcast network? I feel like it's just in line with everything Teach Better does. Like, I don't mean to make it simple, but it's pretty accurate. if you look at anything Teach Better does, it usually goes with two different ideas. One is to uh, support, inspire, and, you know, just like be there for educators. And the other is because somebody wanted it to happen, like our network's <laughs> been asking for it. And whatever our network asks for, we just do. I don't know how to explain it. Like, everything with Teach Better. If you go to teachbetter.com, it's like blogs, podcasts, online courses, like professional development. It all came from our network, our family, yeah. all of you listeners being like, uh, hey, Teach Better, have you uh, have you thought about this? And then we're like, no, let's put that into place in five minutes <laughs> and whatever. So the podcast network actually has been super duper fun to build. Uh, we started out super small. We brought in AWC, award-winning culture podcast, super, super fun. And then we've officially gotten to launch the network within the past few weeks with incredible, yeah. incredible podcasts. And there's just even more coming, guys. We're really just trying to create a space where if you're looking for a podcast recommendation, if you're looking for podcasts that we endorse, that really believe in best practice and amplifying educators' stories and and like really on this pursuit of like the teach better mindset, right? Like a better today than I was yesterday and better tomorrow than I was today. That's what these podcasts are, each in their own individual like niches of education. So if you go to um, the Teach Better Podcast Network page, you're going to see everything from podcasts that focus on leadership to podcasts that focus on equity and, and everything in between. And we're just trying to continue to find a lot of different avenues that no matter what type of podcast you're in the mood for, 
we have a recommendation for you that we've vetted and we know the people that run it and we believe in them and their story. And that's really where it came from. What, what are your thoughts on adding to that, Jeff? No, I agree. I, I think, I think that aligns exactly right. And I think the the third piece of that is we are always trying to find whatever ways that we can help uh, educators raise their voices and share their message and share the value. And I think that's, you know, one of the keys that we look at when you think about, uh, you know, inviting people to write with us and guest bloggers, uh, the speakers network, the conference, right? Uh, the, uh, you know, everything we do, bringing people in the live streams and now the podcast network is just another way we always try to, I mean, that's why this podcast is a thing is because it was a way, another way for us to try and raise the voices of educators because I always go back to this, but, you know, since day one, Chad has been saying it for every problem there is in a classroom somewhere, in a building somewhere, in a district somewhere, there's a solution in a classroom somewhere, in a building somewhere, in a district somewhere. And if we can continue to share that, we can be better all around, better today, better tomorrow, right, for kids. Um, and so, you know, I think it's just another another way to do that. So shout out to the podcast in there now. Uh, Ray already said, you know, we got lots more coming. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Like if you know an awesome podcast that you think aligns with what we are all about as the Teach Better team in this network, Hit Ray or I up. Let us know. You can also email Joshua at teachbetter.com. Josh, uh, Joshua Stamper of the Aspire, um, the Leadership Development Podcast, is the manager of our podcast network now. Uh, so shout out to Josh. Uh, but we're just looking to, to it, it, like, I think, Ray, I think you hit it uh, right on the head. I don't, only part of that add is just that it's another way to raise those voices. And I think it's a, it's a great way. It's a fun way. Uh, I think it's near and dear to your and I's heart just now that we're 208 episodes into doing our own podcast. We, we ha- I feel we have like a little bit that we can share and help out with them and just to be connected with, with them in a different way is just a lot of fun. So I'm super excited about it all. Well, and it's funny, Jeff. I know this is kind of off topic, but still aligned. I had somebody the other day ask me about like teach better as a business. And I, I this is so much more than just like we run a business because like, let's be honest, most of the things we do is free and that's extremely intentional, guys. Like we want... <laughs> to just be there to help you. But like, this is so much of a family, so much of a network, and this is a community. And so this is just another way that we're expanding our community. And like you said, I mean, geez, I'm just repeating it, but like reaching more educators. Like this is not about creating a like special click or like being a part of an exclusive group. Like guys, we want all educators to be in our Teach Better community. We want all educators to have big audacious dreams that they're like hustling after. We want all students to be impacted by incredible educators that are dedicating themselves to being learners. And so this is really, that's all it is. Like we talk about the ambassador program that launched this summer. We talk about all these different avenues. It's just to like, I don't know, reach further is really all it is. Um, Kind of like, I don't know, I feel like it's like a tree roots. You know what I mean? It just keeps on going. You know what I'm saying? I feel <laughs> I like, like I'm it, seeing yeah. a picture here, Jeff. I'm seeing a picture. <laughs> Whatever. Yes. I'm good with that. I love it. Um I I love that I love that you took it and said um it's just we're just growing our community and I really think that's yeah. that's that really hits it. So. Yeah. Um and, and and you know, so that takes us right in this episode really well because we like we already mentioned Adam Dewitt is is part of that uh principal leadership uh, lab podcast which is part of the podcast network now so it was really cool to have him on uh he's just a fun guy and wow i mean i didn't realize the journey he's had the experience he's had i mean so much to offer uh so he's currently a principal and he over- oversees two different buildings uh which is actually four different schools in wisconsin but he's been a uh, he's been a teacher in elementary. He's been a middle school teacher. He has been a middle school assistant principal, a principal, a director of curriculum and technology. He's worked at the uh, Cooperative Educational Service Agency and now being a principal. I mean, this guy has a lot of experience, uh, a lot of knowledge to offer. And he just, I mean, this is just a good episode. He's a lot of fun too. Uh, Ray, you were recently on his podcast and now having him on here uh anything to add about adam adam's just the coolest guy guys like (laughs) enjoy this episode but really go connect with him we share at the very end uh kind of how to stay connected with him and it's so so important obviously you can get that in the show notes but like this is just an educator that no matter how tired you are no matter how long of a day you've had all the hurdles that you've overcome or are still processing to find the solutions for 
this is a guy you want to talk to because he's just funny. He's just, you know, it's just good people. So uh, definitely a great educator to stay connected to. I love us getting episode 208 with Adam DeWitt. All right, guys, I'm hitting pause on this episode only to make sure that you have all the details you need for our Mindset Meetup webinar series. Now, for those of you who have not yet registered, this is a six-week webinar series with all-star educators, guys like Trey Gamage and Dr. Valley Camille Jones and Kevin Butler and Pete Sloan Joseph, Tracy Browder, and so many more. Now, you do need to register at teachbetter.com slash mindset meetup to be a part of the live virtual event, but I want to make sure you had a special 50% off. Let me say it again. 50% off code. So here we go. It's easy. Teach better talk. All one word, no spaces. Use that to get 50% off of our mindset meetup webinar series over at teachbetter.com slash mindset meetup. All right, let's get back to this episode. All right, we are here and we are chatting with Adam DeWitt. And Adam, so awesome to have you on a podcast for so many reasons. Um, but one of the many is the fact that you are actually now officially part of the Teach Better podcast network as well. You and Jeffrey Prickett and your podcast, Principal Leadership Lab. Um, so it's just like a twofer tonight to have you on as part of the network and just being here because you're also just an awesome educator, awesome leader. Um, and we're super excited to be connected with you and kind of learn just more about your story and, and diving in, into everything you got going on. So before we get too far into things, how are you feeling right now? Because I know tomorrow is a big day. It is a big day, but I'm excited. I think it's no different than any other school year, except we're starting it in the middle of a pandemic after a five-month hiatus. Aside from those two things, it's going to be the same as always. So I I am excited. It's fun. Uh, We None of us sign up for the deal to do virtual schooling as a public school teacher, educator, principal, paraprofessional. We do it because we like people. So without people, it it hasn't been as fun, that's for sure. So I think that tomorrow is going to be another exciting day. Adam, I was so excited that you were coming on Teach Better Talk podcast. I had a blast. Like, I listen to your podcast all the time. I love all that you do. But I do want to just put it on record before we get into our first questions. Like, you're Team Ray, right? Team Ray all the way. Yes. We have this in common. We both have Jeff co-hosts. I mean, like, you had to be Team Ray. Yep. And my daughter's middle name is Cassidy Ray. My Ooh. mom's middle name is Patricia Ray. So it just fits. It's a half to. Oh my two. God. Yeah. It's a half wow. to. Adam, mm-hmm. I'm going to change my middle name to Adam. Okay. I'll just, I'll figure out a trend. This will be good. I'll just change my name. It'll be fine. That way we'll just always be connected. That's what I like to hear. Exactly. Well, before we get uh, into all the fun shenanigans as Jeff Gargas plays third before wheel. Before we get into well, the shenanigans. You know. <laughs> before Ray you- Adam. Are you saying that are you saying Ray Adam is a shenanigan right now? I'm saying what we there was a lot of shenanigans before we even hit record, so All I'm saying, you know. Jeff, is that you're the third wheel and before we get into emphasizing that over and over and over through every single answer that Adam's going to share, I thought we'd get into Adam you sharing a little bit about yourself. I know that Jeff already spoiled the news of being a part of the Teach Better podcast network, which was such such an exciting um like opportunity that we were so excited to have with you and um, everything in between. But tell me all the things. What do you do in education? How would you describe yourself? Well, I have gone full circle and I I never would have said that I was coming back to my hometown. That's not what I planned, but that's how sometimes it goes. But uh, Jeff Prickett and I started. And so like I started teaching in 1996 and then two years later or one year later, Jeff joined me at Heritage Elementary School. So that was the beginning of our partnership. So 25 years together, it's almost been as long. It's I was married for 25 years this July. So Jeff and I, and then my wife and I, it's been like this whole constant thing. In fact, when we when we were teaching at Heritage Elementary School in Streamwood, Illinois, we lived like three houses away from each other and never knew it. Oh. So we lived on the same street and we never knew it until we were working together. And that became a lot of fun. So yeah, so I started teaching in elementary school. I had a fifth, a fifth grade self-contained classroom, then I had a sixth grade self-contained classroom. And then um, I, I thought that I didn't like it there, but maturity has really taught me differently. I miss a lot of the opportunities that I had access to in Illinois. There's many more resources in an urban area than in a rural America, but technology has really 
um, aided in making sure that rural America can get access to those those trainings and podcasts and video feeds. So it's getting better. As long as we have high speed internet, it's getting better. So I rescued my wife. She was from Streeter, Illinois. I rescued her and brought her behind the Cheddar Curtain, as you've heard several times on our own podcast. That's and over near me, Streeter, Illinois. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Streeter, Illinois. Go and we figure. got married in Ottawa no. at Star Brock State Park. Yep. Oh, my God. Adam, we're so connected. Keep going. Sorry. I know. Adam Ray. So <laughs> <laughs> I went to Manaqua, became a sixth grade science teacher in a middle school, which I swore I would never do. And that should have been the beginning of understanding that. Every time you say in life, you're not going to do it, you're going to end up doing it. You know, it's like the universe's way or God's way of saying, I'm going to teach you a lesson quickly. So I did that for a few years. I loved it. I had a great team. I learned a ton from my principals at both places in Streamwood and Manaqua, very strong women leaders, and they were excellent to teach me. And then I, I, uh, I, I opened up a private school. I went to church one day and a, a lady came up to me and said, we like what you do. Would you be our principal? I'm like, sure. What, what what are you talking here? And she's like, well, we don't have a school yet. I was like, oh, this doesn't sound good to me. And uh, I went home and told my wife about it. And she's like, so you want to be a principal? Great. How much are they going to pay you? Well, we didn't get there yet, but I'm going to be a principal. So uh, that we opened the school. And before that year even ended, I ended up taking a position in my hometown, Marinette, Wisconsin, as a middle school AP, transitioned to a principal a few, la- a few years later, and then to the director of curriculum and technology in my same district. and then. It just became too big. I mean, how many principals do you know that ever? And Jeff, I know that you're kind of a techie guy, background guy too. I was Cisco certified to install phone systems, like stand up servers. <laughs> That's insane to ask the curriculum. Was that a requirement? Principal. It was for a while. It became a, a need. So I, yeah, since yeah, I was the like director. Just need, yeah. Yeah. So I rolled with it. And it was fun. I, I enjoyed learning, but it, it became too much to be the director of curriculum and technology at that grassroots level behind the scenes, looking at blinking lights on servers. So I ended up moving to a cooperative educational service agency where I worked with 28 districts on curriculum initiatives, technology training, staff development, kind of like what Illinois has with, I think they're called ROEs. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So, and then now I, uh, well, I'll summarize this because I'm getting long winded. We went on a trip to Wyoming and you know, when you ride in the car for 21 hours, one way, you have a lot of conversations with your spouse. And so for 21 hours there and 21 hours back, so 42 hours, she was saying, boy, we love that you work at CISA and that you're happy and it's going well, but boy, you're not home to do the dishes ever and laundry and you know all those other things because I was traveling a lot. So I said, oh, I'll look for a job then. I'll look for something that helps the family. And then we got back to Marinette after our vacation and little old Ocanto called and I had some good connections there because I had doing, doing some training and uh, there was a request to consider interviewing for a middle school principal position. I said, oh, no, thanks. I like CISA. And my wife said, what did you just do? Did you turn down a, a, a potential job option that would put you back into the building leader? I was like, well, yeah, I, I'm fa- happy at CISA. And she's like, didn't we just talk about this for 42 hours? And I was like, oh, I meant I'm going to call him back tomorrow. So <laughs> I've been in Oconto ever since, and it's been really good for me. I, I love the building level leadership position. After working at the district level, this is the place for me. And and I think that I wish I would have realized that sooner because I may have been able to assist other organizations that I have served in sooner, recognizing that this is the place for me. I, I love working. Middle school kids are awesome. They are. And I, I, I was deathly afraid of high school, but middle school kids, they prepared me for high school because those kids are easy. Middle school kids are weird and fun. I mean, they're excellent. So that's where I am now. I'm at the middle school, high school. Our Bayshore Community Academy, which was originally a charter school, and now it's completely uh, a school district school. And then our alternative education program for some kids that uh, have become credit deficient, and that's called the Northeast Wisconsin Learners Academy. So I work with all four schools in two buildings. I love that you described middle school students the way that you did. I always refer to them as like smelly and sarcastic. It's Mm -hmm. totally the truth. (laughs) That's like the same thing, fun and weird. Absolutely. (laughs) Uh, wow. I mean, you've had a, an incredible journey. I'm really excited to dive into our question on failure. But before that, I want to sidestep for a second sure. and talk about the podcast. So can you share just a little bit about the podcast? Sort of how I, mean, some, I didn't realize how long you and Jeff have been connected and, and the friendship there. But then how did the podcast come about? Like, where did that come from? And what's it about? Who should listen to it? Kind of give us the, the lowdown on that. Well, I'll start simply. Everybody should listen to it. So we'll start there. But it's probably most poignant <laughs> for education people. Um, 
But we do have a, an idea for some uh, special guests that maybe don't fit into the, you know, the we're going to put a square peg into the round hole. There's some authors and, and other people that we've come across in our career that we want to just bring on and talk about how can you assist us in the K-12 sector? Because I think sometimes we do the same thing every day and every year in school because that's the way we've always done it. But if we had a different view, we may be able to shake it up a little bit, and which is another great podcast, Shake Up Learning. And I think that would be something. So going back to the podcast, Jeff and I, over 25 years, we it's always been that way. Um, well, when we were in person, we just had coffee every morning. And by the way, he drinks really bad coffee, like from a red can, and then he puts powdered creamer in it. It's awful. So I, <laughs> I don't think he's ever learned anything better yet, but he's still my friend. So we did that. And then when I left Illinois to come back to Wisconsin, we continued to talk on the phone. And as you know, podcasts didn't even exist when that was happening. And we always said, you know what? I think people would like to listen just to what we talk about because we were usually trying to solve a problem. I'd call them and say, hey, I just had this parent say this to me and I really want to help them. But what, what about the institutional impact? It, can I do that for one family if I don't do it for all family? You know, like those types of discussions would take place. And that's kind of how the podcast has come about. We just started kind of recording our personal phone call conversations. And now we are inviting other people on board to share with us and try to keep it as unscripted as possible, which you guys have been doing this for a while. It's hard to keep a conversation on track if you don't have some guidelines. So Jeff and I try to adhere to those a lot, but we try not to script it at all. I love that. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, I mean, obviously we, we uh, script this quite a bit with our questions and stuff. We like to go, let it go where it goes. But yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I always, I have such respect for, and I always love listening to ones that just kind of just go wherever they go. Um, and I enjoy that about, about the show as well. So I appreciate you going into that a little bit. Let's talk about um, one of my favorite things to talk about is which is failure. So can you share a story with, with us about a time that you've had a failure? Kind of take us there with you. What happened? How did you overcome that? And then what'd you take away from that? So this is a real one. So this isn't like an interview, like I'm trying to get a job where you tell them the one that caused the least amount of harm. So this is real. So I hope nobody listens to this part if they want to skip it. But I was a middle school AP and um, I was getting information about the possible school closures of some of our local school district buildings because of um, budgets and enrollment, declining enrollment, things like that. And I was like, oh man, this is bad. And so I ended up sharing that information with a friend who I thought was a confidant um, and you know, more like like if I was talking to Jeff, I would say, hey, dude, what do you, should I do this? Should I, is this going to cause great upheaval in the district? Should I start looking for a job? What's the next step? And I shared it with a close friend. And, well, it was bad. It went bad fast. So that was just before Christmas that year. And he has a mom who drives bus for the same school company, for the same school district. So he told his mom, his mom told teachers and then it was uh, probably the first, it was the first day of Christmas break. I had good coffee and uh, my in-laws were in town and I got a phone call from a principal within my district. She's also, she was also my fifth grade teacher. So she's always been a mentor to me. And she's, Hey, how are you doing? I'm like, Oh, I'm doing great. The in-laws are here. We're having coffee. The kids are you know excited about Christmas and everything's taking place. It's going well. And she said, well, can I talk to you for a second? Can you sit down? I'm like, Oh boy, what happened to somebody? Uh -oh. I found out that you shared information from the admin meeting that wasn't supposed to be shared. And I was like, oh, I had that, like, I could have just puked. It was awful. Yeah. And she went through the whole process of trying to help me. But talk about a leadership lesson. If your team gives you parameters, you can fight about it at the table. You can, you know, but once you leave there, you better keep your mouth shut. But the lesson came from, so I didn't sleep much during break. And my, my friend, the principal, she said, you know what, I'll talk to the superintendent. Uh, she's a good friend of mine now. We've been working for years and then we'll come up with a plan. And I was like, I think I should call her. Now, knowing that I know now, I should have called her too. But anyway, I followed the lead of that principal. And then the first day back to school, I was in my office and didn't feel good. And I saw my superintendent walking past the window and I was like, oh, I know where she's going. She's coming here. If I could hide, I would, but there was no place to hide. <laughs> and she came back in, took her hat off, took her jacket off. She sat down right across from my desk and she said, you know why I'm here? And there was no, there was no kidding around that time. It was, yes, I do. If I could change anything, I would. And she, this is the lesson. She wasn't known to be the most friendly and heartfelt person. And she said, Adam, I just want you to know, I've already forgiven you. You, you made a mistake. You're going to have to find it in your heart to forgive your friend. And I was like, what? 
how does that happen? I've heard that you're mean. And that wasn't at all the message. I mean, there's nothing she could have done. She couldn't, she could have suspended me. She could have disciplined me, taken pay away. None of it would have changed how I felt. I was, I was broken and she gave me another chance. And that's, a, that's the lesson that I learned from that. So it ended up to be a bad, it was a bad thing that ended up to be a good thing that shaped me for the rest of my career. Oh my gosh, that is such a good lesson. But like you telling the story, I could feel like the pit of my stomach fall. Mm -hmm. I know how that is. And I haven't been specifically in that situation. But holy cow, you can just tell when you have that moment, you're like, Oh my god, I messed up. I disappointed other people. I affected other people. Gosh, what a such a bummer. I'm so sorry about that. But a really great learning experience. Absolutely. Very true. Be honest. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Say less if you don't need to. There you go. That could be like a little plaque or a bumper sticker. Be yeah. honest. You know, shut your mouth. That'd be good. That's right. Um, so every single uh, time we have guests on, we really like to ask them what fuels their fire. Like what's exciting them about education, all that they're doing, kind of all those parts and pieces. So you do a lot. And even just hearing about your job, like, it's exhausting to hear about what you're responsible for on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't know how you actually do it. But if you had to pick what gets you up in the morning, what fuels your fire, what's really keeping you excited about education and everything that you're doing, what would you be sharing on? It's simply that we get to see our students tomorrow for the first time in five months. It's been a long time. And as we talked about before hitting the record button, that's why we do what we do. We are people, people. <laughs> and it, it's going to be an ecstatic day tomorrow. Uh, we still have a lot of limitations, though. You know, our athletic programs aren't fully running right now. Um, we have a, a high, medium, and low category for our Packerland Conference that we play athletics in. And we're currently at a high level for COVID in our county, which is limiting us from playing. So I keep looking for ways that we can find solutions for that. It, I, it's difficult because sometimes you're limited by the, the, that kind of data. But it's not taking away from the excitement that I have. Uh, for tomorrow. I can't wait to see our students coming in off the bus and out of driver's seats into the entryway. Tomorrow, I will start at the middle school because I always think that the most important, if we can make fifth graders feel welcome in the middle school, because I'm sure they're scared to death tonight. We weren't able to have an in-person open house uh, because of COVID-19. So I'm going to be at those doors tomorrow cheering on our fifth graders. Our teachers will be there. Um, we are Blue Devil Warriors, and we will get through this together. But that's the most exciting thing is that we are going to have people in our buildings tomorrow. I love that. No, that really, I, I understand that feeling. Like it, they breathe energy into the, into the building when students walk in. It's so exciting. It is. So you've been a leader in education for a very long time and you continue to inspire others and your podcast does so much to just amplify the voices of, of all types of educators. Um, but if you had to give one piece of advice whether it be to a new teacher or maybe just a, a teacher who's looking to be better, right? What would what would your piece of advice be? Well, in prepping, I kind of learned that I, I can't give one piece. It's going to be a whole pie instead of the piece of the pie, but they're, it's all short. And if, if our new teachers aren't using Twitter, I have grown so much since I think it was 2009 or 2007 when I first started using Twitter. And it, I have a direct connection with so many people. You can direct tweet or include a, an author in, an, in a tweet and oftentimes they respond. So if you want an expert, get on Twitter and get your questions answered and then developing a PLN from there. So whether it's a professional learning network through Twitter or some other means, do it. You can't do this alone. Uh, make sure that as a new teacher, you go to school events. If there's a volleyball game, go to the volleyball game. Your students will always remember that. If it's a reading night, get a book and read a book out loud. Just do the things that your school is providing and get it done. It's the best place for families and students to see you as a person rather than the adult that they think sleeps in a building. Shop local grocery store stuff. Even if you don't live in your community, shop there. Even if it's like once a month, just go there, let them see you so they can ask those questions. Like, so do you think we're going to play basketball this Sunday? It looks like it's going to be a, a snowy day. You know, let them talk. Let them have a, a platform for you to be there. And then whatever you do, do it for your students. So you'll never be wrong, in my opinion, if you're the if I'm the principal and a teacher makes a mistake, that's fine. If you're doing it for what's best for students, whatever you're thinking, do it and keep that in mind as the lens and the focus for all of your actions and then take risks. And that's one message that I've received from all of my principals that I, when I was teaching, take risks when they don't work, just don't do it twice. That's it. So I know that's more than one, but that's the whole pie. That's the teacher pie. 
That was my favorite thing I think that you shared when I was on your podcast. I was like learning from you because you kept making comments like that, like, hey, just don't do it again. Like if you mess up, just just don't do it again, right? Like it gives you such permission to try things because it's like, hey, just try something. And then, hey, if it doesn't work, like just don't do it again. (laughs) It's just so perfect. And I feel bad for teachers that have not had an administrator. And trust me, I'm far from perfect. But I have a I have teacher friends still that you know started teaching when I didn't have chosen that as their their path for their career to continue teaching, and they don't have administrators that are saying go ahead I'm, yeah take a risk but if you make it wrong I'm going to call you into my office and you're in trouble those are that's that's unfortunate because un- our teachers are creative they are leaders that aren't formal leaders they're definitely leaders they're leading groups of people sometimes more than I do on a daily basis they see it, you know in a high school they may see 300 students in a day. I only have a staff of 15. So completely different leadership styles. And we have to continue to support them and give them a chance to take risks and feel like they can take a risk and know that their parachute will open and that will catch them softly on the ground. Oh, I love that. That's a good pie, man. It's a good pie. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um, all right, let's keep, let's keep the fun going here. We're going to do right. the next six questions, Adam. Your goal is to answer each one in 15 seconds or less. You ready? I am totally ready. Uh, what is one ed tech tool you cannot live without? It's not very sexy, but I'm telling you, I'd be lost without Google Calendar. I mean, it's pretty simple, but it's complex. And then I'm going to add one more because I love Twitter and any other social media that makes connections with students and families beyond the brick building. Uh, Give us a book that you're reading right now. Well, I know it sounds pretty cliche, but I did get a copy of Teachers Deserve It from somebody named Adam Welcome. I don't know if Ray knows him or not. Yeah. So I'm about halfway through that one. And then another book is, which Jeff and I didn't even know, but we're both reading Atomic Habits by James Clear. So both of those books are currently active in my repertoire. And who do we need to follow on social media today, on Twitter today? Uh, this is a, a total cheesehead pick, but uh, at Joe Sanfilippo. <laughs> He's a superintendent down in uh, southwest Wisconsin. People may know him on Twitter as hashtag go crickets. Great leader. Great one minute leadership stories every day. And at Sarah Johnson, we interviewed her on our podcast. Fantastic woman. We loved talking to her. I felt so inspired when I got done podcasting that night that I, I didn't know what else to do. I just kept reading and learning, and she really inspired us. And then, of course, uh, Eric Scheninger, um, former Twitter principal of the year. And uh, those three people have really fed me over the course of a long period of time. Oh my gosh, you just named some of our favorite people. Top notch followers, yes. Cool. Nice, nice picks there. Uh, what's a good YouTube channel or website uh, for educators? Well, <laughs> this is kind of funny, but Jerry Brooks, because sometimes we just have to laugh. Uh, last year when Jerry Brooks posted that, uh, maybe it was a couple of years ago, but it was a snow day on YouTube. What do principals do on snow days? And he was going through the building and like on his belly and he's not necessarily like, you know, marathon runner shape. And he was riding on the scooters through the hallway. He had his feet up on the desk. He was dancing, using the teacher's whiteboards. I just thought, you know, that guy is funny and it's totally educational humor. So we need to laugh. Jerry Brooks is one of those guys. Uh, Give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. Make phone calls every day to parents. Do it soon and do it often. Weekly, I would say run down five positive, write down five positive interactions and moments with either Anybody with it that you come in contact, personal or professional, because we have to remember those during those hard times. And then monthly, choose one day and unplug from everything. Go and enjoy some nature, sit on Lake Superior, go hiking, take your dog for long walks, do something to unplug from everything. And what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Well, it's near and dear to my heart. Um, my mom, she has always said, always do your best. She used to yell it from the porch. There was one day where she said it to us. We didn't respond. She drove down the driveway in our old beater car in front of the bus. Then she made us hug her until we said, always do your, and then we had to say best. So Hmm. way to go, mom. My sister and I have always done our best. Nice job, mom. I love that. Good job, mom. That's right. Patty Ray. Patty Ray. (laughs) I love her. Gosh. I thought Jeff might like that. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Hello. Well, Adam, I want to make sure everybody not only connects with you on Twitter and Instagram, but also they need to go subscribe and rate and review your new podcast that just launched with uh, Jeffrey Prickett. I just have to say, I know our listeners already know this. We kind of talk on this every so often, but 
you know, when you subscribe to a podcast, you get to automatically get updates when new episodes come out, which is really, really great for content that you enjoy and you know that you want to stay up to date with. But if you actually take like the two minutes and actually leave a rating and review, then that helps other listeners who may not have found the podcast yet to become a new listener. And so if you're willing uh, to do that, not only for Adam and Jeffrey, but really like anybody, any podcast that you really enjoy, take the time to do that. It's a great way for them to continue to reach more listeners, more educators, and amplify the voices of others. So Adam, would you mind kind of sharing how they can stay connected so they can make sure to go do that? Absolutely. On Twitter, I'm at aduit2. That's the number two. Uh, Instagram is the principal underscore Adam. And then the website or blog, we are still working on that piece. But you could find our Facebook group. It's the Principal Leadership Lab on Facebook. And then, of course, my personal um, Adam DeWitt and Principal Leadership Lab are there. And then that's it. So far, no books, but Jeff and I are always dreaming. So stay tuned. And, you know, you can find all the links and resources and everything we talked about in this episode over at teachbetter.com in the show notes, as well as those really important links for connecting with Adam and keeping this conversation going. So head over to teachbetter.com for all of that. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. And if you can give us a rating and a review, we'd really appreciate that as well. And let's keep taking this one step further. Think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and connect with these amazing educators and share this podcast with them. Uh, Adam, this was such a great episode. So happy to get you on. Um, just excited about the podcast. So pumped that you guys are part of the Teach Better Podcast Network that will connect us with you, that we can learn and grow with you every day um, and learn and grow from you every day. Uh, just super excited. Really appreciate you coming on. Give us some of your time, and Thank you. Thank you to both of you. It's exciting, and we're humbled to be part of the Teach Better Network. And until next time, let's get out there and let's teach better.